When she was about 10 or 12, it became, uh, I think, increasingly clear to me that we needed to make sure that Kate was in a safe place uh, in the highest and best place that we could possibly find for her um, in the long run. And the, I think the best outcomes with those kinds of things tend to be uh, ones that you start early on. So a lot of what we were thinking about was uh, how can we best support the family? How can we best support her? We were not going to be able to give her in the long term um, the things that she was going to be able to get from a place like Pathfinder Village, namely 24-hour uh, support, 24-hour um, reinforcement of the activities of daily life, of bathing, dressing, toileting, uh, putting your coat on and on, zipping it right, putting your hat on, uh, you know, gloves, the whole thing. Um, there's just no way we have a family of a uh, total of five, uh, including ourselves, that um, we had the ability to give that level of intense all-time care and attention given the fact that we both work, uh, given the fact that we have two other children, and um, that's just, it's an awful lot to ask. Uh, and mindful of the long-term view that you know, transition has to occur, what's the best time for that? Generally speaking, it tended to be a little bit earlier rather than wait till she's 45 and we're in our 80s, which just doesn't make any sense at all. I think we began looking at that and looking at a number of different um, places. Um, some were for much higher functioning kids. Um, some are for much, much lower functioning, more medically involved children. And this one seemed to be a balance of community um, and care and quality that you just don't find at many other places anywhere. Well, you know, I think that we actually thought about um, Pathfinder as a place where Kate could um, become an adult um, and be a part of a program that, while it's not a college, it felt like initially as we were looking at the program for Kate that um, it would provide some of those kinds of experiences. Um, and, you know, it certainly did. One of the things that um, I think is most exciting about Pathfinder for Kate is that um, she's so much more independent um, here than she ever could be at home. She knows this village well now. Um, she can, you know, walk to the meeting hall. She can walk to the bakery. She can go down to the school. She can go down to the gymnasium for, you know, an activity. Um, and that simply wasn't possible at home. You know, people talk about sending their children off to camp and you know, they come home two weeks later and they're an inch taller. Well, Katie's clearly many inches taller since she arrived here. She, she does things for herself in a way that um, she wasn't doing at home. There is nothing here that is remotely institutional. The residents all live in group homes, so there are six, seven, eight, residents in each home. They're all around a green. They're located next to one another, so they can go from place to place. There's more warmth here. The staff is, they the level on which they extend themselves is really extraordinary, I, I think. I just haven't seen anything like it. Um, it's really clear they genuinely are fond of our daughter. Um, and she is genuinely fond of them. The other thing is I think that um, the guilt that we all feel about here is this disabled child that we're responsible for, we brought into the world, we are going to make sure that she's taken care of, and now we're giving her to strangers. That is not a small matter. That is a very real issue. Um, we had that a lot early in the decision-making process. That's that's the big hurdle to get over. I think is this yeah. this notion that um, you know you're giving someone up and you, you know you're not going to be responsible anymore. You're still responsible at the end of the day. But the point that I think that got us over that more than anything else was that um, 
It would be better for her in the long run for us to make this transition. The transition is inevitable. It's going to occur. The question is, how are you going to manage it? And are you going to have the best possible place in the, in the long term? And if you leave it until you as a parent are in your 70s or 80s and have no more choices, who is going to look to help your child when they are in their 50s and 60s? Uh, if not older, so th that's not really an option. It's gotta be something that you deal with much earlier on. And hard as it is, and look, how hard is it to take someone that's lived with you, who's your your baby, all the way up to age 18, and uh, let them go? It's, uh, it's not easy. So. Uh... It was very painful to let go of her, but. She's done so happen. beautifully here, and um, we know we made the right decision. You know, we watch her grow and see how happy she is.